Thank you for this opportunity to present my capstone project through Jacksonville State University. I'm Cressy McCarran. When trying to decide the subject of my capstone project, I've looked at data through STAR Early Literacy and um, STAR Reading over a three-year period. And I determined that over that three-year period that an average 64% of our kindergartners were still reading on a pre-primer instructional reading level when they at the end of their kindergarten year and that 29% of our first grade were still reading below a first grade ninth month instructional reading level at the end of their first grade year. So for my capstone project I decided that I would, wanted to decrease that deficit by half through four steps. One of course after a bunch of inquiry research. Um, step one through quality curriculum um, improving our instructional strategies, collecting and studying data, and through professional development. Step one, quality curriculum. Up until this year of my capstone project, the um, pre-K's curriculum was basically teacher-made and had been for many, many years. So it makes sense that if our pre-K-3 program is strong, that makes our pre-K-4 program strong, which makes our kindergarten and first grade program strong. So we decided to adopt Zoophonics for Pre-K-3 with teacher input. We really researched different programs, and then we decided on DLM, Early Childhood Express, which is a McGraw-Hill product, and would lead seamlessly into the Wonders Reading that is also McGraw-Hill that the kindergarten and first grade were already implementing. They were in their second year of when we started this capstone, capstone project, second year of implementing Wonders Reading. Step two, instructional strategies. I determined that we were not really using small groups like we should, that we were really doing that traditional type of teaching, um, which is teacher-led and not uh, student-led. And so um, decided that maybe we could increase our differentiated learning, our small groups, and I instituted a program called Bridge where we have an interventionist that works with those students that are struggling in small groups of three to four. And our new curriculum was very uh, influential in making the learning active. And I wanted, uh, directed the teachers to be sure that they were reading aloud to their students every day and to increase their reading and listening stamina. Step three, we collected and studied data. In years past, we did look at the data, but we did not study it. So we take the start early literacy um, four times a year, pre-K four through first grade. And first grade takes the STAR reading um, four times a year. Kindergartners begin doing the STAR reading once they reach probable reader through STAR early literacy, and then we start them on accelerated reading. But we looked at the data and used it to um, determine where their strengths and their weaknesses were, um, how to improve the instruction, and also to determine who needed that um, extra help through the bridge program. So we, um, if they were below that benchmark, then they, were work, they worked with the interventionist two times a week or three times a week. Step four was through professional development. And I, since we were focusing on differentiated learning, then I did an observation that just looked at differentiated learning with each um, teacher. Then I based their needs on that, then determined four professional learning community topics. And each topic we spent three sessions with. We uh, implemented this in our faculty meetings after school on Wednesdays. And once we got through the three sessions per topic, then I uh, did a walkthrough observation to see if they were implementing that topic in some form or fashion. And then at the end of the year, I did an observation to see if we really improved using differentiated learning throughout the school. The topics that were determined based on the um, needs of my faculty was determining what differentiation was not, then five key aspects of dif differentiation through Carol and Tomlinson, who actually wrote a book on that, and then classroom management when you're using small groups. Also differentiating content, using kindergarten stations, and using academic choice. 
at the end of the year, um, through the March um, data, we noticed that our kindergarten students, only 2.5% were still reading on a pre-primer um, instructional reading level. So we exceeded our goal and more than half did. The half was 32% and we reached 2.5%. Our first grade results um, were also positive. Um, it showed that 18% were still reading on a first grade um, instructional reading level. However, when you looked at the data further, it showed that 13% were reading below a, a first grade ninth month instructional reading level. So we ex still exceeded our goal for first grade, which was um, at least re you know having less than 4.5% uh, reading on a um, you know reading below 1.9 instructional reading level. Uh, at the end, when I did the observations, I still don't, do not feel like we're using differentiated learning like we should, so I'm continuing that. Some other changes that we made were that um, we saw that DLM, Early Childhood Express, still had some gaps, so we're using handwriting without tears. We're merging those two curriculums um, to make the instruction better. And um, we're also, like I said, continuing our professional development. And I'm also allowing teachers to shadow and watch other teachers, observe them, the ones who are really good at differentiated learning in small groups. Throughout this uh, capstone project, um, we put really focused on, you know, maintaining our vision and mission. And we used data to make our plans. We evaluated them, monitored them, and revised them as necessary and I uh, used professional development to improve their uh, instructional capacity uh, to ensure their rigor, maximize their learning, and provided academic support. And the teachers were expected to collaborate and um, share accountability for the students' learning. Also, uh, I navigated the change and used database inquiry uh, in order to continuously improve. The second project I'd like to tell you about was through IL-556, and it's when we developed a professional leadership plan. Little Madison Academy has never had an, a school improvement plan just for Little Madison Academy. Since we're part of Madison Academy, we've always had that, you know, one that was for the whole school. So when I did this project, it was our first time to do uh, school improvement plan just for us. So the plan was based on um, teacher and parent surveys and data from STAR Early Literacy and STAR Reading. The first goal, first of all, let me tell you that the building leadership team helped come up with the plan. And so our first goal based on data and surveys was to decrease the amount of pre-K students who fell below that STAR Early Literacy benchmark. Um, even though they receive that extra academic support through our bridge program, we want to lessen the amount of students who require it. So through professional development, um, we met and talked about how we can group our students using STAR and come up with strategies and um, in trying to help all students, not just the struggling students. I wanted them to collaborate weekly with each other by grade level uh, study the data and I wanted pre-k3 to, to use zoophonics. We wanted to make our class sizes more appropriate so we reduced them from 18 to 16 for pre-k3 and 4 and we're using bridge to also um, complete our differentiation. Goal number two was to decrease our behavior problems. So the way that we were determining if we were successful on that was to have less than 100 discipline documentations for 2017. Um, we realized that we needed to revise our behavior plan. So every BLT member did um, researched a, um, an article about um, disciplining and behavior in early childhood classes. They also looked at other schools that had were similar to us, looked at their discipline plans and how they handled it. And then we 
through that, they did their literature review and we developed a plan for Little Madison Academy. Um, the faculty reviewed it. We made additional changes when everybody was happy with it. We presented it to the president. Once he was happy with it, he sent it to the board for approval. The second part of goal number two was doing a book study because we realized that the way that we talk to the students either engages them in cooperation or makes them not want to cooperate. So we are um, together going through this book, How to Talk So Kids Can Learn. Goal number three was to meet the first grade needs. Um, when this building was um, built in 2000, um, it was just built for pre-K three through kindergarten. So for one, our um, playground is not sufficient for first grade bodies. And two, second grade teachers were worried about the first grade being down here with preschoolers, not developing independence, being babied, not ready for second grade. So this was uh, one of our goals. So we decided to have high expectations for our first graders to upgrade the playground. We're researching companies, we're getting quotes, and we'll present our top three plans to the school president. And when he approves one, then we will determine how we're gonna financially back that project. Goal number four is to improve our enrichment schedule. So every week, uh, kindergarten and first grade have music, art, library, technology class, and Spanish. Well, they weren't really getting the full benefits of it because our enrichment schedule was so bad. Um, we uh, determined the problems, brainstormed solutions, and tried to present the scheduling to the scheduling committee our concerns. It really did not work out for to help our um, enrichment schedule for this year. In fact, it's worse than it's ever been, but we plan to continue to present it and make our enrichment schedule better for next year. Some lessons learned while developing that plan was that we need to conduct surveys for parents from parents and uh, teachers every year and use them to develop a school improvement plan. That even if your goals are not met, don't give up on them, continue, you know, revise, monitor um, to continue that goal. And uh, provide time for collaboration. The teachers only had about uh, 30 minutes of shared PE time to collaborate. And they were usually using that, needing that time to prepare for the next activity. So I've worked out a way to start next semester, um, a 45 minute weekly time for each grade level to collaborate. And I'm really excited about also including some professional development and some inquiry, inquiry research into this time and the teachers are excited about it too and then I'm not taking away their planning time. Also, um, we're asking second grade teachers to give us their expectations for the first graders when they're moving up. We don't wanna just assume, we want to know what it is they want first graders to be able to do when they move up the hill. So during this project, um, also everything was um, geared toward our vision and our mission we used data to make plans and achieve our goals. We monitored, we evaluated, we revised. Um, also, uh, through professional development and feedback, I improved their instructional capacity. Um, we are expecting high, uh, well, we just have high expectations. We're closing those learning gaps for all grades and maximizing learning for all of them and um, expecting the teachers to collaborate and have shared accountability and we're managing student behavior. And we're also, um, I initiated and managed, managed the system-wide change and used um, data for our um, inquiry and to continually improve. Thank you for this opportunity to be in the instructional leadership class, um, program at Jacksonville State University. I feel like it's made me a better leader for Little Madison Academy, and I'm excited as I move from director to certified principal at Little Madison Academy. Thank you for the opportunity.